Okay, I took out my ICOM IC2730, the black uh, screen edition. I was debating getting the 5100, things of the sort. Uh, it would have been nice. But my consideration is I didn't want to put something expensive in the truck, but yet have the things that I want. Now, when I'm not using my truck as much, I usually take it out and it just slides right underneath my shelf so that I can work on it, uh, use it. However, I do use the uh, ICOM um, IC705 uh, uh, for VHF, UHF a lot. And um, basically permanently uh, set up here in the office uh, that I use uh, for work. I do get uh, some questions on it. I mean, it would have been great if they had a more detailed display, but then again, you end up paying for it. So it did meet my expectation for what I wanted. When I don't have the radio, um, I always have a couple of handhelds, TID radio stuff, right? Throw tucked away somewhere, thrown in case I need communication. And I have an adapter where I could use the antenna on top of the roof of my truck, which is always there. So it works. You know, when I'm off grid, uh, camping, uh, ice fishing, stuff like that, yeah, it's great to have all these things with you. So it works. I do get uh, questions every so often. Uh, I guess uh, some people having to some difficulties in and making changes, uh, switching bands, things of a sort. Initially, my database pretty well matches all my other radio because I use a program called FileMaker Pro. Um, so I don't have to keep recreating something. I basically create a script and say, okay, create a, a similar setup that I have on my ICOM 705 or my ID52, where it's uh, compatible, of course, like no use putting these star frequencies in there. So it's all done automatically. I hit a button, a script runs, creates a CSV file. I can then uh, connect to it directly I, on my Mac, for example, using, uh, I think, the RT system or use the ICOM software. I find the ICOM software uh, works much better. <laughs> I, I have videos um, showing that, so if you want uh, more details about it, uh, there's a playlist called ARS, Amateur Radio uh, Systems, um, stations, I should say, and it will be in there. So this way, it will avoid you from having to uh, scroll down through unless looking for it. So the playlist, I think, is at, uh, at the bottom of uh, the page. Now, of course, uh, I created a database that I use a lot locally, which I call home. And I have all the repeaters in Alberta, for example. And because of the list, it's, it's big, including uh, British Columbia, I do break it up in groups. So if I want to switch, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, if you want, for, I even had created a GMRS FRS uh, group. So the way I would start, you have to be in memory mode first. And then you go, the center button is called uh, for VFO megahertz and scan button. I hold it down for a few seconds. Now, this would not work if you're in VFO mode, so you have to be in a memory mode first. And then I turn the main dial. Let me just scroll through here. As you can see, home, this is the one I use the most, which this one in particular is already there. In fact, I can just hold this down. That's home. And that's, it scans away. There's about 40 odd memory channels for that one. So I can run both of them at the same time and 
listen to the same station on both sides or separate, depending where it stops on on scan. So it's completely full duplex uh, or on uh, dual band. Okay, so that's that's the one I usually use. And of course, Alberta, I have to break it down into two groups. Uh, going by call sign, some A to Q. And then from R to Z. That's the way I arranged it. B, C, A to I, K to R, R to R, and S to Z. So I, I believe uh, you're only allowed like 100 per bank or something of that sort. And you got about 10 banks. So there is some limitations. Anyway, so I just break it up. I could have rearranged the group according to frequencies if I want to. I thought I'd try it this way first. Again, I can simply go to my database, make, not even make, I already created. I just hit one button and it will sort it into a frequency, you know, starting from high to low. Oops, someone is coming in. I'll turn down the volume and break it up in four groups, whatever. So it, it, it's great. It works. The one, and I have Yukon, by the way, <laughs> and then GMRS, FRS, and a bunch of commercial stuff. Okay. I know through use, uh, I decided to rearrange the Alberta group uh, because of my traveling area, the way I travel. And uh, for now, this this will work. Okay, let's uh, stop there. I'm just going to get out. So that's how I switch bands. You have to be in memory mode. You hold, you hold this down for two seconds. It will take you to a group, select the banks that you created, either using uh, RTS system or uh, uh, ICOM software. However, I import the data to these fi uh, to these uh, apps uh, through my FileMaker because it creates a CSV file for me. And then if you hold it down for a second, it'll start scanning. Stop, the way it goes. Okay, another area is pro, uh, it's making uh, updates or editing the memory. That's what I'm gonna show next because uh, there's, uh, I believe there's a difference. I never had the old older unit, but I, from what I gather, the, the steps for editing the memory is a little bit different. I can stand uh, corrected on this because I, I have never seen an older one. So I'm determining that by what I'm seeing online, the comments made, where people give instru instructions how to um, edit the memory and it doesn't match the ones I have. So let me show you that one. Okay, I want to edit this particular channel. It has a tone squash and I want to turn it off. It happens to be in memory Group A46. So I hit the menu button. And uh, of course you can scroll what you want to do. It's tones I'm dealing with. So I hit tone. And then and I'm going to look for off. Okay, and let me go back. Now we see the tone. However, if I move the dial, the, the squash is gonna come back. Okay, I have the tone squash. I wanna turn that off. Hit menu, tone, scroll until I have the off. When I go back, it's off. However, if I move the, the memory, it will come back. Now, I have to do a, a memory write. I believe there's a short uh, pause and a long pause. 
So I hold it down until the word name comes up. Then I scroll until it says write, and I hit that. And then it asks, overwrite, and I'll say yes, and hit that. Now, when I move this, it's gone. If you do a, a little short touch on the memory write, you have different uh, options. And I think this is probably, that can be confusing for some. You have the same button. There's a short pa uh, push, and there's a long push. So you need to uh, differentiate the differences. Hopefully, this little short uh, video will kind of give you the concept and how it works. I'm surprised they didn't make it much easier, <laughs> but I guess with limited space, um, so many buttons you can put on. As one thing I like about the ID52 Plus, I find it uh, to be probably the best uh, format radio, if you want to call it, when it comes to editing uh, channels, memories, and things of that sort. But it's a learning curve, and you use it often enough, not a problem. And the odds that you have to do it that often is so little. In fact, for me, it was so little that if I don't do it once in a while, I'll have to relearn it. <laughs> it's a good thing I have my video to remind me. Okay. Again, if it's helpful, it would be appreciated. Either way, we certainly would like to see it. a thumbs up or and a subscribe. Have a nice day. I should add uh, one more bit of information between the short and long pause. If I was to hit the short right, it says edit. By selecting edit, it will take you into the long pause. Okay. Let's go out. I hit edit again. If you leave it there, don't hit it. You can scroll it and you have other options. So, so long as you know the difference, you know, okay, you hit the short pause. You see the word edit, no problem. Just enter again, and there you can do the right. If you haven't done so, it would be appreciated. Please subscribe. And thank you for watching. Have a nice day.